welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show's all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about why blaming other people for your problems takes away your personal power. The truth is, at some point of our lives, we blame other people for our problems or mistakes. It could be our parents, friends, or strangers. We think, oh, if this person didn't do this, things would have worked out differently for me. Or because this happened, I wasn't able to accomplish my goals. Whatever or whoever we place the blame on, the reality is blaming others takes away the most empowering gift we have, our personal power. Our personal power is that place within ourselves that we can always rely on to change any outcome in our lives that we aren't satisfied with by shifting our mindset from why me to try me. When we tap into our personal power and take responsibility for our lives, it gives us the power to be the creators of our own destiny, where we are in the driver's seat and able to make empowering decisions to make what we want a reality. Successful people know that if they want to change anything in their lives, that they must first take 100% responsibility for their attitude and their actions to make things happen in their favor. The next time you find yourself wanting to blame someone when things don't go your way, instead, focus your attention on how you can find a solution to the problem and proactively make the situation better. As Oprah Winfrey said in her final show, it doesn't matter what your mama did, it doesn't matter what your daddy didn't do, you are responsible for your own life. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I heard that Mindy Kaling picked you out of 15,000 other uh, contenders. So, so talk to us about that. Um, I found out that fact after I got it, like after I got the role, which is probably a good thing. Probably yeah. good thing because uh, <laughs> what it's like me out prior. But yeah, um, really cool to know that over 15,000 people from the get go before like, you know, much was even released about the show or even the character. There were 15,000 people from around the world that want this show to happen and want this show to like come to life. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Canadian actress Maitreyi Ramakrishnan. Maitreyi rose to fame playing the lead character Devi Visha Kumar in the Netflix teen comedy Never Have I Ever, produced by comedian Mindy Kaling. Mitri, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. It's a beautiful day. Nothing to complain about. Life is good. And I'm so excited to have you on the show. I've been binge watching both seasons. So I'm, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> You. <laughs> but before we get into the success of Never Have I Ever, let's talk a little bit about how you began. When did you develop a love for acting? Um, I would say probably in grade 10. Um, and that was truly just because I wanted something to do after school. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for an after school musical, Footloose, with my high school. And then it took off from there. Yeah. And I know you acted in school. So, you know, what kind of skills did you learn during that period? And how do you think it kind of shaped you into the actress you are today? Yeah, I mean, my high school, like, we didn't have the biggest, you know, drama theater budget that, you know, you could get. So it was a lot of, like, buy your own costumes, a lot of DIY, which, honestly, I have no, like, you know, beef with because it really just made us all realize how hard work, how much hard work it takes but also that everyone's important and that like, just because sure, maybe you're the lead, doesn't mean you're better than everyone else. So let's just all do this together, work really hard together and then like have fun. So yeah. it made me genuinely fall in love with acting and just, you know, the art and craft of it rather than just like, you know, get up to like all the drama, like the drama within the drama. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, hundred percent. And I'm sure your family is so proud. Everyone from Mississauga, Toronto, GTA. I'm sure like how, how I'm sure they're so happy for you and your success. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> so, so thankful for all the support I've been getting, especially from my family. Cause I can't do this without them. I couldn't do it as well, nearly as well without them. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome, and let's fast forward to your audition for Never Have I Ever. So walk us through the process. What was kind of running through your head? I mean, my best friend, they were the one that sent it to me. 
the whole open casting call tweet. So I almost like didn't see it because I wasn't on Twitter, but my best friend was. Okay. So we decided to try out for this and we didn't think we would get it because we knew that people all over the world were going to be auditioning. But we wanted to put our best foot forward and we just wanted to make, you know, a day of it and to have fun with each other as just, you know, two best friends wanting to hang out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fast forward, did you ever think that you would get this role? And I know you didn't have any like professional acting before this, and you're such a natural actress. So were you surprised that you got the role or like what was running through your head at that time? I was really surprised in the sense of like, wait, this is actually happening to me. That's crazy. But then I had no idea how my life would change. Like, I just thought like, I could only think as far as, okay, you get to like be a part of a show, yeah. right? Not even like the concept of like you are a lead on a Netflix show or even thinking about the idea of like, wait, this could be a hit Netflix mm -hmm. show. Yeah. So I was only thinking as far as like, oh, you get to like be in a show. That's really cool. Yeah, no, for sure. And a Netflix show. And it's also produced by Mindy Kaling. <laughs> even more epic. I heard that Mindy Kaling picked you out of 15,000 other uh, contenders. So, so talk to us about that. Um, I found out that fact after I got it, like after I got the role, which is probably a good thing. Probably yeah. a good thing because uh, <laughs> what it's like me out prior. But yeah, um, really cool to know that over 15,000 people from the get go before like, you know, much was even released about the show or even the character. There were 15,000 people from around the world that want this show to happen and want this show to like come to life which I think is really awesome and proves how much we need more representation because there's obviously a demand for it. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's really important. And you know, for those people that don't know about the show, which you must be living under a rock if you don't know, but if the, for those people that don't know, let's talk about a little bit about your character and who she is. Yeah, uh, Davy is a 15 year old girl from Sherman Oaks, California and yeah, she's got a lot on her plate. Um, she's trying to figure out how to balance her family life, but also her friends and then her love life or attempted love life. <laughs> but within like the first 15 minutes of the show, it's not a spoiler, her dad dies. And that's a big thing for her because her dad is like her best friend. So we realized, you know, of course, she's got all the typical teen kind of, you know, drama that she has to get through and a good old coming of age story, but it's also coming from a real place of heart with grief of losing someone like your parent. Yeah. And there's a lot of characters in the in general in the show, mm -hmm. but like Davy, of course, is a messy, messy character mm -hmm. that is very relatable for a lot of people. Absolutely. And did you find any similarities uh, with your character within yourself? Because, you know, she is South Asian growing up in a South Asian household. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, both Davey and I are perfectionists in terms of like trying to like always be the best. Like we do like to always, you know, try to do our best in school and all the time, like do that. But for me, my parents never really pushed me to do that. That was just very self-imposed. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of self-imposed. But in terms of just like personality outside of school, uh, Davey and I both are people that feel a lot, all the emotions. We're both very emotional beings that have their heart on their sleeves. So that's one big, big reason why I love Davy. But I was nowhere near as boy crazy as her. I, that was, that's a lot of <laughs> that I never could or still couldn't like, yeah, no, nah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you seem very focused. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about like, I just got to focus on me. I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. And you know, did you find that, um, you know, since you didn't have any acting experience, did you, how was it kind of, you know, doing such a big role on a Netflix show? Um, because I feel like you play this role so naturally and you really are the character. It's like, I don't see anyone else playing this character. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the first couple of weeks, like season one, it was a huge learning curve because yeah. I didn't know anything about being on a set because I've never been on a set ever in my life. So I had to learn like the technical terms, like what's a mark and an eye line, and, you know, <laughs> those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Then um, I quickly learned that 
the best way to just be on set is to trust everyone to do their own job and then focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. So I quickly learned like as long as I give respect to the camera guys, the lighting guys, sound guys, just everyone. And then of course, like ask questions when appropriate, then it's going to be good. They're going to mm -hmm. look out. They're going to want to look out for me. And as long as I focus on myself and my acting, it can't be that bad. So mm -hmm. I really try to just focus on myself. And then when I would get like, you know, whatever critique of like, okay, make sure you like, you know, turn a little bit more this way. I'd really just try to always hit it every single day I came to work, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And did it come to you naturally? Were you nervous at all? Because I know my first commercial, uh, major commercial, I was like, I didn't have any acting experience. So I was super nervous. And as you said, sometimes you have to trust the producers to kind of guide you. And I kind of got through it that way, but I was so nervous. So I can't imagine playing like a lead in a Netflix show. Were you nervous at all? Because I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell at all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I wasn't honestly too nervous. Like. I was, of course, like excited. Yeah. Um, very much more excited. And whenever I'm nervous about anything, I like to try and channel those nerves through, you know, my craft of like, okay, let's bring this as energy into my performance. Yeah. So that's how I usually deal with nerves. But Mindy and Lang are great, the co creators of the show, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, never made me feel dumb for asking questions. The environment that they created on set was such a safe space where I could ask questions and be like, why is it this way? I don't understand. Like, what does this mean? And I never felt stupid for it, you know? Yeah, yeah, that. 100%. And you know, what's been the best part of being on this show? Cause it's been such a success. Ah, there's so much. Ah, <laughs> okay. I think the best part of the show is just, you know, being able to connect with so many people around the world of like, you know, of course the fans and just mm -hmm. being able to give this thing that means so much to so many people. Like I 100% every day on set will always give it my 150% because I know how much this show means to people. And I think that's really awesome. That just as a concept, like one of my favorite things I was told by a fan after like they watched the show, um, they said, thank you for getting me through my quarantine, which is such a simple <laughs> And they could just mean like for one day in quarantine, they watched the show and that was it. And they never thought about it after. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it like really got them through hard times and like, you know, whatever they were going through. That was like one of the times I realized how art, whether it's, you know, visual art or music or film, TV can really like affect someone, which is cool. Absolutely, yeah. And you know what? The show got me through quarantine. I mean, I loved it. I looked forward to every episode and I watched, I think season two, I watched within like two days. I just like finished the whole season. Quick binge. Quick binge. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just like a nice feel good show and I, I can completely relate to that. And you know, speaking of fans, your fan base is crazy. You know, you see on Instagram, you have so many followers, you've gotten so much recognition. You were named by today as one of 18 groundbreakers, a list of girls breaking down barriers and changing the world. What does that title mean to you? It's funny because like, to me, that title of course means a lot because that's such an honor to be named a groundbreaker. Like, yeah, okay, of that's course. great. Yeah. But to me, I take it and think to myself, okay, cool. And I like, let's do something with this. I can't just sit on a title and just say like, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta actually live up to that title in the sense of stay true to what you believe in and what you wanna change in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So title or not, it's just something that I think is who I should be, regardless of whether someone names me a groundbreaker. You should just always want to make change, whether whatever that means to you, but yeah. Absolutely, and what kind of barriers did you face when getting into this industry? Because it's a difficult industry to break into and not that many people are successful. So what kind of barriers did you kind of face first getting in? I mean, it's such a like complex question when I get asked that because I got this obviously off of Twitter, like an open yeah. cast call right and it was the first thing I ever auditioned for and then here I am right yeah. like but I know for a fact that many many other actors and actresses have to go through a bunch before they finally you know make a break right now for me I don't think getting into the industry was the part where I had to deal with a bunch of stuff all over and all those barriers I think it's 
as I kept going through, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah, I got in and I got the role. Now it's like, okay, now you need to protect your ground here as a person. Don't let people try and change you. Don't let people walk all over you, you know? So I think that in that way, that has been where the barriers are. Mm -hmm. And I feel mm -hmm. like people should talk about that more because we usually tend to equate barriers to just until you make it and then you're good. Yeah. It keeps going for a lot of people. A lot of people go through it after they make their big success, if that makes sense. Yeah, and what do you think kind of separated you from other people out there, other actors? Because, you know, obviously Mindy Kaling saw something really special in you to pick you over 15,000 people. So what do you think kind of separated you from others? I mean, I have no idea because <laughs> of what everyone else put out there. But yeah, that would definitely be a question I guess Mindy would be able to answer better. But I mean, I just tried my best and here we are. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's just, you know, being in the right place at the right time. I think that's a lot of also success too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's of course, you know, having skill, but also, you know, like opportunity. Just good old fate. Yeah, absolutely. And you seem really focused. And as you said, you're a perfectionist. So I'm sure that kind of had to do with it as well. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> our show is all about inspiration and inspiring the new generation or anyone watching. I made this platform to inspire people by showcasing success stories. So I want to ask you, you know, for someone going through a hard time, maybe an actress who's like not seeing the results she wants or just someone kind of going through a difficult time since it is kind of weird times in the world right now. What would you say to them to encourage them to kind of continue to go after their goals? I'd say the biggest thing is to not compare yourself to those around you. That's yes. like, where I find a lot of people in like all fields, not just like acting, but all sorts of fields, even not just like the arts. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. like to compare themselves to those around them. And if they see someone else succeeding, they see that as their own personal failure then because mm -hmm. they're not equally succeeding, mm -hmm. right? Like I would hate it if someone my age looked at me and was like, oh, but my tree's already doing this. Like I'm behind. It's like, no, no, you're not behind. And I'm not forward or anything. I just have a different path, which yeah. yet again, came through something like Twitter. Like yeah, yeah. wild, especially in the arts. You never know how it's gonna happen. You never know how it's gonna you know, work out for you. So you just need to trust the process and do it for the good reasons. Like continue wanting to be an actor because you really love acting, not because, you know, you just want fame. Mm -hmm. I think if you do that, then it'll come on its own time. Just be patient. Absolutely. And I love that you said that is not to compare yourself to others because especially with Instagram and social media, yeah. it's so easy to, you know, scroll through someone's feed and see all the highlights in their lives and, and you know, feel yeah. maybe that you're not there. So I think that's yeah. really important. You never know what like is actually behind those Instagram posts of like exactly. what's actually going on in their life. It just seems sure like happy, fun times, but you don't know. And I think that's just like a general rule of thumb. Try not to compare yourself to those around you. Stay focused on yourself and your own self-worth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I also like that you said that every one time comes at a different time, you know, like sometimes, uh -huh. you know, your time might be now, but like someone else's time might be tomorrow. So it's good to not compare what someone's doing yeah. now because your time could be at any time, really. So I think that's really yeah. great advice that you, you said. Where did you see yourself in five years? Taking your platform uh -huh. and yeah. Five years, I'll be 25. Whoa. <laughs> Five? Um, hopefully, <laughs> like, it'd be awesome to take on more roles. That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, more roles that are different to Davey. Roles that if they met Davey, they would probably punch Davey. I don't know. <laughs> they'd be so different. They'd be so different. It'd be great. Um, and then maybe one day into, like, directing and producing okay. and just being able, like, maybe this isn't a five-year plan, that's pretty <laughs> quick, but I'd love to do eventually what Mindy did for myself, you know? Like, open doors for others to come into the industry because I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Mindy doing that, you know, making that choice to not just cast someone that's already, you know, in the rounds of whatever casting agency. She just opened it to Twitter, and then now I'm here. Yeah. So I 
be really cool to do that for others and in other aspects too of not just actors but like writers and just you know upcoming filmmakers and just open those doors because it's important yeah absolutely and what are you currently working on uh well right now keeping my fingers crossed for season three yes, um yes yeah so right now uh i'm working on a modern adaptation of pride and prejudice and it's gonna be it's called the netherfield girls which is really cool and smart because it's where you know <laughs> set in the actual original jane austen book wow but it's gonna be an easy A type of vibe. It's directed and written by Becca Gleason, who is super cool. And I'm just really excited to like, you know, start my first feature film and with such a great role like Elizabeth Bennet. So. Wow, wow. And what can people expect from that? Who else is acting in it? Right now, all I know is just, <laughs> I play like, I'm, I'm Darcy too. It's a self-love kind of vibe. But yeah, no, right now, um, all I can say is just myself. <laughs> so, awesome. Right well, we look forward to it. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. It's it's really inspiring to see someone, you know, especially from Mississauga, from this area, to to really succeed. So, yes, continue the amazing work. You're gonna, you are a star, and you're gonna continue to shine. So, thank you so much for making the time. It's it's really exciting, and yeah, we hope to have you back soon. Thank you so much. It's been Thank awesome. You so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.